Right guys, this is a practice test set 9, paper 2 H calculator. And so this is pack 9 made by Excel. Let's have a look. We have um, integers, three of them. And the smallest must be X, then 10, and then Y. So the mean of these three is 11. So we should know that x plus 10 plus y divided by 3 equals 11. Because that's how we get the mean. It's all the numbers added together divided by the number of numbers. The range of x10 and y is 7. Well, they're written in order of size. So that must mean we get this equation um, y minus x largest minus the smallest equals 7. Is this some kind of simultaneous equation? So let's rearrange 1. So equation 1, we multiply both sides by 3 to get x plus 10 plus y equals 33. That's minus the 10, minus the 10. So we get x plus y equals 23. So let's call that equation 2 here. Equation 3. Let's write that nice and neat. And we've got y minus x equals 7. So if we plus these two together, so we write a plus, plus, because they are simultaneous equations x plus minus x cancels out so this becomes 2y equals 30 so we know divided by 2y equals 15 now if we sub y in into equation 2 we'll get x plus 15 equals 23 so we know that x must equal 8 so I think that's the answer 8 and 15 let's sub it into here 8 plus 15 is 23 add 10 33 divided by 3 is 11 that's got to be the answer question 2 a box is put on the table the face of the box in contact with the table is in the shape of a rectangle 2 meters by 1.25 meters we have a pressure work out the force and we have a table or a formula to use. So we have an area here to work out. So that's 2 by 1.25. 2 times 1.25. It is a calculator paper. So you can use your calculator. But it's just doubled. That's just doubled. So that's 2.5 uh, meters squared. That's good. The pressure is in meters squared. So we don't need to play around with any conversions. That's 42. So if we put that into a formula, let's get our method marks. Equals force divided by um, the area, which is 2.5. So we should know we just need to multiply both sides by 2.5. Let's get the force. So 42 times 2.5 equals force. And you will notice that this question is uh, similar to the one that appeared in 2019. And uh, 42 times 2.5 should be 105. Okay, so this is an estimate of the mean time these students spent doing sport. Give your answers in hours, correct to one decimal place. So this is when you use your calculator. So it's an estimate because we take um, the midpoint from these times. Now this is easy to see the midpoint, that's 1, 3, 5, uh, 7 and 9. And if you have more difficult numbers, the midpoint is the two numbers added together, then divided by 2. And then we times that by the frequency. 1 times 5 is 5. You have 27, 120, 280. 63. 
what's the total do you need your calculator that's 15 3 5 at 8 13 at 6 19 and that is 4 and do line up your numbers a bit better than this as well so we've got a total of 495 And what's the total here? Have they given us the amount? No. So what's 5 add 9? That's 14 add 24. 38 add 40. 78 add 7. That's 85 here. That's a different total. That's a total of um, students. So. All we need to do is 495 divided by 85. So just double checking some figures um, on my calculator to make sure my totals are correct. Uh, you wouldn't, you would be surprised the amount of students who make um, small mental errors in exams just because of mental fatigue and tiredness. And a quick tip is sometimes you might get a frequency of zero, and I've seen grade nine students do 1 times 0 equals 1 which is incorrect and they mess up lose 2 marks because 1 times 0 is 0 so do be very careful when you multiply anything by 0 so we're going to divide that by 85 to get 99 over 17 it's the one decimal place remember be careful that dot means reoccurring so just in case press it one more time that was 5.8 Eight, and that's the answer that's four marks as well there's a candle question here have a read right you can see that you've got 210 grams that's 6.3 kilos so um, first 6.3 kg you need to know equals 6300 grams because a kilo means a thousand Grams. Uh, each candle makes 210 grams of wax so we're talking about a number of candles so let's earn our method marks so step one would be to work this out to see how many candles you can make that's 30 now she sells two fifths of the candles for 13 pounds each that's 40% so if you want to do 30 divided by 5 times 2 that will give you the amount of candles or work out 40 percent so that equals 12 candles let's pick up some effort marks they're sold for 13 pounds each so we must have to do 12 times 13 that's 156 pounds She then reduces this price by 20% and sells the rest of the candles. Well, there's 12 candles sold at £13, then 3 fifths has got to be 18 candles. So 18 candles left, and it's £13. So um, you have to find 20% of that equals. Two pound sixty. So thirteen. Um, it is a calculated test. So, but don't want to have bad habits. That's eleven pound forty. So the next sum we need to work out is a uh, eighteen times eleven pounds forty, and that's um, two hundred and five pounds twenty. So we just need to add 205 pounds 20 to 156 to make the total amount of money. Now this could quite easily appear on a non calculate paper because none of the figures are too hard to work out. So it would be good if you can do this on a non calc as well. 
Moving on. Question five. Anna Leonel shares 675 pounds in that ratio, four to five. Leonel, Leonel gives three fifths of his share of the money to his mother. How much money does Leonel give to his mother? Now this is a straightforward ratio question. So you do four, add five, equals nine parts. You do six, seven, five, uh, divided by nine to find one part. That's um, 75. And this could easily be on a non calculator part as well, uh, on a non calculator paper as well. So uh, Anna's part is here, Leonel's part is five. So we need to do five times 75 to get Leonel's part which is 375 pounds he gives three fifths of this to his mother so fractions of amount we need to do three fifths times three seven five or you might know that is 60 percent so how we do that is uh, 375 divided by five times that all by three and that equals 225 pounds and that's a nice extra few marks and practicing our key skills on ratio right I've seen some grade 7 students get this wrong just because you do not practice this skill often so we uh, multiply the brackets we get 3c minus 21 plus 6c plus 8 because we always multiply those numbers combine the like terms 3c and 6c is 9c be careful here, you have minus 21 plus 8, do not get confused, a minus and a positive uh, makes a minus, because that's when the next to other that changes the sign to minus, just make sure it's a number line, and you're going this way, you're going to plus 8 to it, so that is going to be minus 13. Most people clean this up, but if you just expand the bracket, so that's x squared minus 2x plus 7x minus 14. If you get three out of four terms correct, that's normally one mark. And the final answer now you've got minus 2 plus 7, which makes plus 5x. So that is x squared plus 5x minus 14. Factorise fully. Well, what's the highest common factor of 21, 8, and 21? It is 7, so 7 on the outside. There's a y in both, so you take the y out. Add a 4y, because that makes 28y squared minus 3. Expand it out, you've, you've, you've got time to double check your answer because factorising is the opposite of expanding and you would see you'll get that answer not worth losing marks on a question like this nice work question 7 so solve, remember to do the inverse I've seen grade 7 students make a mistake on this as well and these should be your banker marks. So step one here is we do not like this divisor. So we would multiply by four on both sides. Now it's important to remember that the whole side is multiplied by four. That's a common mistake people make. So rewrite that out and expand that. always uh, subtract the smallest amount of x it's generally easier to do that we get minus 2 equals 5x plus 4 it's going to minus 4 on both sides now let's get minus 6 equals 5x divide by 5 so x equals uh, minus 6 over 5 not bad 
that should be uh, marks in your pocket. Let's see, question eight. It's a speed distance time question. So speed distance time in the triangle. We're working out the distance. So distance equals speed times time. Now look, this is in hours, but we have minutes here. So there's 60 minutes in an hour. So one thing we do need to work out is what's 42 divided by 60 to get that as an hour. So you can see that's 0.7 hours. We add that to the six hours. So we do 650 for the speed times 6.7 hours to get that answer. And you can see it's 4355. And I'm just going to write it below just for the examiner to give us the full three marks very quickly. Question nine compound interest. This is a straightforward one. So it's 20,000 times. Be careful here because 1.1 will be 10% interest so it's 1.01 that's 1% 1 5 to the power of 3 do that on your calculator 1.015 to the power of 3 it does say to the nearest rupee so to the nearest rupee but let's do the full answer first Nine one three point five six. Nine one three point five six. Was it seven five? Seven five. Just to guarantee some method marks. Then we round that to the nearest rupee. Perfect. Question ten. A bearings question. Now it looks like a bearings question, but we're just going due east, so draw your compass. If you forget that, there's two mnemonics that you can use. Never eat shredded wheat or naughty elephant squirt water in a clockwise direction. So due east, draw the sketch. That's B, doesn't need to be to scale, that's 200. Then he walks due south to C. That's 160, you know that's a right angle, and you know that is Pythagoras theorem, correct? Which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're going to do 200 squared plus 160 squared equals c squared. Do get into the habit of writing these things down, don't do it all on your calculator, then work out on your calculator. C will equal now we can press square root the last answer it does say to three significant figures so press the SD button uh, the third significant figure here is a six so it's a digits number a unit number so that's going to be 256 but I am gonna use good form and just write in Two five six point one two four nine six nine five four nine six nine five and that answers two hundred and fifty six meters. Don't lose your method mark there. It's quite easy to round to three significant figures. Question eleven there's a pool, a uh, shape for a cuboid. Let's have a read. Right, so it's applying your volume skill with a bit of metric conversion. 
because you have meters here and then 60 centimeters there so as long as you know that one meter equals 170 meters that should be easy enough Jeb is going to put water into the pool uh, the level of the surface of the water will be 60 centimeters below the top of the pool so 60 centimeters equals 0 0.6 we do 2.5 minus 0 0.6 to get 1.9 so that's how high the water is going to be filled up to right so first step is to let's work out the volume so we do 3 times 12 times 1.9 Use your calculator, and that equals 68.4 meters cubed. 400 liters per minute. They've given us this fact, they don't always give us that. So we need to uh, multiply that by a thousand. We turn it into liters. that's 68,400 litres flows into the pool uh, 400 litres per minute give your answers in hours and minutes so let's just get into minutes first so let's do 68,400 divided by 400 that gives us 171 minutes You know there's 60 minutes in an hour, so that's going to be two hours to get 121 minutes, and then 120 minutes, and there's 51 minutes left over to make 171, and that's that answer. That wasn't too bad. This paper is nicer than uh, paper one. Do write that down here the examiner is not searching for your answers let's do question 12 you need to know your interior and exterior angle formally to do this you need to work out the angle X this is isosceles so always look for this isosceles triangles are generally used a lot in problem solving questions with angles you've got a pentagon and an octagon there's two formulas you can use these are the two uh, key formulas the sum of interior angles is 180 times n minus 2 which is a number of sides the exterior angle equals 360 divided by n I always use the exterior angle because this can appear in a non calculator and the numbers are just easier to work with with the exterior angle so first step is if I find the exterior angle of this octagon we're going to get 360 divided by 8 which is um, 45 so this is 45 can you see the interior angle interior plus exterior equals 180 because that's a straight line so we know that is 135 so this is 135 and that is 135 now this is not a straight line so be careful here we cannot just say that is 45 as well that's 135 let's look at the pentagon I'm going to show you the exterior angle here so 360 divided by 5 equals 72 So that's 72. So you can see, oops, sorry, the exterior is 72. So the interior is 108, which makes that 108. You can see that's not a straight line. The key is to use this for. One oh eight. 
So this side angle is 108. Can you see you get angles around the point? So we have 360 minus 108 minus 135 here to work out. That is um, 117. Now, what do you know about isosceles triangles? Face angles are the same. Angles in triangles 180. So we do 180 minus 117 to get 63. There's two base angles, so we do 63 divided by 2, which equals 31.5. And I hope that was quite easily done for you. 31.5, and those are nice marks in your pocket. Question 13. Work out the size of angle X. Bit of problem solving with trig. Would not be a problem if we and there might be more than one way to do this, but always uh, use the easiest method that uh, uses uh, minimal brain power because you want to save that for later on. If that's 16 and that's 24.3, then this bit must be 24.3 minus 16, so that is 8.3. We know this length and this length is 12.5, so let's take that out, 8.3, 12.5, we have the angle here, that's the hypotenuse, that's the adjacent, that's the opposite, we do not need the hypotenuse, so I'll just cross that out so we don't use that by accident, uh, remember Solcat Toa. And it's got ONA, so we're using TOA. So that all that means is tan x equals opposite over adjacent. Use our calculators. So you have eight point three divided by 12.5 right and then we use the inverse tan button shift tan that answer or type in 8.3 over 12.5 to get the value of x it does say one decimal point so we say x equals lost the number 33.6 So this bit here is 33.6, hopefully you can see that. We know that this bit is a right angle, so let's not use that. We shouldn't use another letter in X here really, because we've got an X in this letter. Uh, so remember to just call that Y instead. Try not to use the same letters, because x is actually something else as you can see so x equals 90 plus y which is 33.6 equals 123.6 to 1 degree into one decimal place. Question 14. Right, a lot of students will get this wrong. You have 72 kilometers per hour, so 1,000, 1 km equals 1,000 meters. An hour into seconds, well one hour equals 60 minutes and times 60 seconds. So one hour equals 3,600 seconds so what we've got to do is to get 72 thousand that's meters
per hour. Now we want it to convert that into seconds. So per hour means divide, that's the symbol. So an hour is how many seconds? If that's one hour here, we said it's 3,600 seconds. So it's divided by 3,600. And you could uh, do this on non-calc as well. And that's 20. And then I'll show you how to do that. Cancel the zeros. 72 is into uh, 720 into 36. Well, you know, 236 is going to 72 at the zero, which makes it 20. Question 15. Okay, so we're working out percentage increase between 2016 to 2017. This 355 cars is key, so we need to find the number of cars in 2017. First six months of 2017, the company made 25 cars each month. So let's do 6 times 25 equals 150. Then we do 6 times 45 equals 270. Let's add that together, so the total amount of cars is uh, 420. Now what's percentage increase guys? So it's a uh, new amount minus the original amount divided by the original amount. That gives it as a decimal, you want to turn it into percentage times it by 100, but you should be able to do that automatically. So the new amount is 420. The original amount of cars in 2016 was 350 divided by the original amount or comparing with 350. Uh, so that is 70 over 350 times 100. That should be a 20% increase. Do that on a calculator to make sure. And you'll see the answer is 20%. This question could come out in non-calculator. Numbers might be slightly easier, but as you can see, you could do this without a calculator. And for good form, let's just write it here. The company's income in 2017 was half a million pounds more than their income in 2016. The company's income in 2017 was 8% more than the company's income in 2016. Work out the company's income in 2016. Ooh, that's an interesting percentage question. Probably easiest to do this as a ratio question or a ratio problem. But I'd like to say, well, 8% must equal 500,000. And I like to use a new. Um, what we call a unitary method. So, 1% equals divided by 8. So, I'm showing you how you can do a question like this on a non calc will equal 500,000 divided by 8. That's 62,500. times that by 100 to get 100% of the amount so we times this by 100 and we get 6250000 and let's write that in here for good form that's 6.25 million Question 16, perpendicular lines. Right, this is quite easy once you know how to do it, guys. So, key fact, remember equation of a line equals y equals mx plus c. 
Now this has been switched around, but the number next to the x is the gradient for a straight line. So you can see, I'm going to call that gradient 1, m1 equals minus 2 here. Now, equations of perpendicular lines is when m1 times m2, the second gradient, equals minus 1. So for m2 to be perpendicular, minus 2 times something has to equal minus 1. So m2 equals positive a half, the negative uh, reciprocal of that number. So we get y equals a half x plus c. This is for the perpendicular line. Now it passes through the point 47. That's nice. So let's write and substitute that in. So um, y equals 7, x equals 4, so half times 4 plus c. Now we do this to find c. 7 equals 2 plus c, and we can jump to c equals 5. So the equation of that perpendicular line is y equals a half x plus 5. Almost done. Find the coordinates of the point where L2 crosses the x-axis. So that's what the line will look like roughly, but less steep. Crosses the x-axis is here. So when a line crosses the x-axis, that is when y equals 0. So we just need to solve for y equals 0 because we're finding x. So you get minus 5 equals a half x times that by 2. So x equals minus 10. And you can see that's minus 10, 0. And that makes sense from the diagram to double check you're working. Now this is a probability uh, question. Now normally most probability questions you'll use a tree but I can look at this question and tell a tree might not be the best uh, way uh, moving forward with this question just because you have one, two, three, four different numbers doing it three times. You can get this right with a tree but you're more likely to make an error because that could be messy. But do what you can because you will get some marks whatever you method you try as long as it uh, makes sense. Fiona takes at random through the counters she adds the number the three numbers to get a total so they might use the word sum here sum means add not product which uh, is a mistake many students make of this type of question they multiply the numbers instead of adding them. Work out the probability that a total is an odd number well let's see we've got one two three four five odd numbers and one, two, three even numbers. This is the easiest way to do it. So we should know that um, odd plus odd plus odd, that's what the O means, equals an odd number. You know three even numbers is going to make an even number. But if you have odd plus an even number plus an even number, that's always going to be an odd number because if that's odd so we've what are the different combinations of one odd and two even so we can have um, even plus odd plus even equals odd and even plus even plus odd equals odd in that combination and just check double check that's all the combinations you can to make odd but that is correct so we just need to work those out and I'm probably that will get you a method mark so how many odd numbers are there at first so odd 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 so that is five out of eight remember she's taking the counter out and not putting it back so that's five out of eight times we've taken an odd number away so it's there's four left times four out of seven and there's still three even numbers left that's times three out of six. Now this one, 
odd is 5 out of 8 times even which is there's 3 even numbers so 3 out of 7 and another even number so it's only 2 out of 6 left even is 3 out of 8 times the odd which is 5 left out of 7 and we've taken an even number out so there's only 2 evens left so that's 2 out of 6 and the final one is even first 3 out of 8 times 2 even numbers left 2 out of 7 times the 5 odds left over 5 out of 6 work all that out on the calculator then add the probabilities together so for these types of questions always use the fraction button it's just a bit easier times 4 out of 7 times 3 out of 6 now with probability we can just leave that as a fraction that is acceptable that's 5 out of 28 so the next question is 5 out of 8 times 3 out of 7 so you can go back on the calculator so you don't need to type that in again that's 5 out of 56 and now this is a doable question without a calculator uh, we've got 3 out of 8 times now 5 over 7 and it could be just as easy just to type it all in again times 2 out of 6 Let's double check that's correct that's 5 out of 56 again that's 3, 2, 5 so that should be the same 3 out of 8 just because of the way uh, multiplication of uh, fractions work so that will be the same but I'll just show you and this is because our uh, multiplication is communicative that's 5 out of 56 what do we do here we add all these up now that is the same as 10 out of 56 so let's just show it working so I'm just doing this to show you what you do if this was on a non-calculator paper and that makes 25 out of 56 and that will be the right answer so you can see this could appear on a non-calc they'll probably give you slightly easier numbers but you can see all the numbers work out quite nicely um, so that is uh, 25 out of 56 and that's a excellent 4 marks but please just give it a go because I'm certain or I know that doing this will get you one mark uh, doing one of these will get you another mark, method mark and just doing one more of these calculations will get you the third mark uh, so even if you technically finish this halfway you'll get 3 out of 4 because it's 25 out of 56 will give you your answer mark so you get 3 out of 4 in this without even finishing the question question 18 now it's a bounds question this is a very very nice one you just need to apply your bounds very well now we want to find the upper bound value of A to one decimal place so you need to understand that we want the biggest number here divided by the smallest number here to get an upper bound and if it was asking for the lower bound then we would want the smallest number possible divided by the biggest
just in case you get a question like that in the future. Correct the two significant figures. Let's work out the upper bound of this first. That's the second significant figure. So it's the nearest tenth. So 8.45 is going to be the upper bound. 6.35 is going to be the upper bound. This is a second significant figure here, so it's going to be 0 0.275 this upper bound. Doing that will get you a method mark, guys. Now, just for good form, you should do the lower bound. So that's 8.35, lower bound, um, 6.25, lower bound, and 0 0.2. 265 is going to be the lower bound. So how are we going to get the upper bound? Well to get the biggest number on top, P must be the biggest number. So it's going to be P upper bound minus, we want Q as small as possible, so it's minus Q lower bound divided by T uh, lower bound. So what we're doing is 8.45 as you're working out, minus Q lower bound, 6.25, divided by T lower bound, which is a uh, 0.265. Do that on your calculator. Let's just use the fraction button. 8.45 minus 6.25, divided by 0 0.265 equals 430 over 53. It does say one decimal place. That's a uh, recurring decimal. Just in case it's uh, 0 0.36, uh, just press the SD button and say you're 100% correct. And that answer is 8.3. one DP. And that should be correct. Now that should be an easy three marks for you. Solve the inequality. And this can appear as a um, applied problem, but when you see this, remember your quadratic skill. Can you factorize this? Use your, any method that you prefer. Um, I do this way but use the mass watch method that is perfectly legit you get um, minus 24 as a factor and because we times 4 by the 6 factors of t uh, minus 24 um, that add together to get minus 5 well let's just do our factors 8 and 3 4 and 6 and you know we don't really need to do 2 and 12. You know 8 and 3 could make 24, 8 times 3. So that's, we want a minus 5. So it's got to be a minus 8 and a plus 3. And few people use this method, but just use the math watch method. So what I do is I just write 4x minus 8. 4x plus 3 as a starting point because I'm multiplied by 4 I need to divide by a total of 4 that goes into this perfectly so I divide by 4 here uh, so that makes uh, x minus 2 4x plus 3 greater than 0 is the solution so we know 4x plus 3 must equal 0 and x minus 2 equals 0 so we have x equals 2 and x equals uh, minus 3 over 4 just solve that now I do like to draw a graph it's a quadratic we know uh, that's the y-intercept because that's when x equals 0 so that's minus 6 it's a positive quadratic so it'd be a u-shape it goes from minus 3 over 4 to 2 
time, so apologies for that U. That's essentially it. It's greater than zero, so you could see greater than zero is this bit. So the inequalities are apart. You can see, so that's when x is greater than two to get your answer mark, and x is less than minus three over four, and that's your full marks. Um, because this is a calculator question, you could just use a quadratic formula if you can't factorize, and it's acceptable to use a you know minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac over two a. That's fine as well, or you could complete the square. But that is essentially your full marks on a question at the end, which is a grade eight to nine question. And I would argue that's eight plus because that's a factorizing of a coefficient as well. And uh, could actually just be a grade nine, actually. Probably a grade nine because this is a question near the very end. Ooh, a 3D sphere shape. Have, let's have a read of that question. Now the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. And uh, normally they give you the formula, but in this instance they haven't, so you uh, need to remember that. Now I'm pretty sure if you write an expression for this, you will get um, a mark, method mark, if you substitute the values in. So how you would work this out is to find the volume of the whole sphere and then subtract the volume of this hollow section because it's a hollow sphere to get the total volume of the sphere because it's a mass density volume question so first method mark is to find the volume so the volume of this sphere is going to be 4 over 3 pi so we want the whole thing which is 1.2 add t because that's the radius of it all cubed but minus 4 over 3 pi 1.2 is r here um, times 1.2 cubed to get the volume. Now we need to remember that um, density equals mass divided by volume and volume equals mass divided by the density. And I remember this triangle by remembering who did David Beckham marry? David married Victoria and that's sort of the wedding arch. This is just how I remember it, my mnemonic. So, you can see they've given us the mass and that's the density. So let's just start off with volume equals mass over density. So we can say what we've got for V equals the mass 1980 over 2700. And you can rearrange that in a different way, in any way you want. So I'm going to substitute those values in. So we get 4 over 3 pi 1.2 plus t cubed minus 4 over 3 pi 1.2. Now we need to find the value of t. So we need to um, rearrange this formula. So we need to plus... So we're going to plus that to both sides to get to get this. Now we can eventually solve this to work out what t is. So I would work out this bit using a calculator times shift pi times one point two cubed. Now it says the two significant figures, so if we round to three decimal places, um, we're going to be within that range comfortably. Pi uh, 1.2 plus t cubed. So what can we do first is divide out 
now pi is just a number so divide both sides by 4 over 3 pi by 4 over 3 pi to get so dividing Pi up there. Equals uh, one point nine oh three. So that's one point two plus T cubed. The opposite of cube is cubed root. So we cube root that answer. Shift cube the final answer. So we get 1.2 plus t now equals 1.24 minus 1.2 minus 1.2. Oh, and that says to two significant figures, so I need to add more numbers to that. One point two three nine two three. One point two three nine two three let's just check that's rounded to plenty of figures so t is going to equal naught point naught because um, to two significant figures we do not count the leading zero so that would be up to here that's the second significant figure so t equals naught point naught three nine Now, I know a lot of people would lose an answer mark here because T is in centimetres, that answer is in metres, so we do need to, um, 100 centimetres equals 1 metre, so we need to times the answer by 100, and that will give us um, 3.9 centimetres. That's 5 out of 5, and I hope that makes perfect sense to you and this is how you can easily get a grade 8 and 9 if you can answer questions like these the big ones at the end and it is doable you might make a silly mistake and just lose an answer mark but you can easily hit 3 out of 5 method marks here now if you can now if you can do questions like that you're really definitely pushing for grade 8 and 9 and you can see it is achievable to hit most of those method marks so Eight and nine is in your sights. Question twenty-one. Now, this could, these types of questions can appear in further maths as well. So, when we multiply fractions, we multiply numerator by the numerator and the denominator by the denominator. Now, we need to spot that that is a difference of two squares. Uh, I'm going to make this a bit easier because we should be able to factorise early. So that bit is. Um, 2x minus 5 2x plus 5 because we need to make it in the simplest form we should be able to factorise this as well so 5 times minus 7 is minus 35 we need a difference of 2 so I actually know it's 5 and 7 we've got plus 2 um, so that's got to be the plus and that's the minus 5 Remember, do it any way you want, but I do it this way. That's going to be 5x minus 5. 5x plus 7. We've times by 5 to get to this minus 35. So I'm going to divide one of these by 5. And that is this factorised. Now we're multiplying this by a fraction, so perhaps separately somewhere else so I'm just going to leave that there please make your working clear for the examiner but it's easier to just split this up so when we subtract fractions we want the denominators the same um, so how we can do that is multiply top and bottom here by x minus 3 cross multiply 
x minus 3 and multiply this one by top and bottom by 2x minus 5 and 2x minus 5 4x minus 10 minus now people will make a mistake with the negatives here think about it, if you do minus 3 times x that would be minus 3x but if you're doing a minus times a minus here that's going to change that to a plus 9 it's very common for people to make this mistake and we write that that's another section to help us out now let's simplify that so that's going to be x minus 1 x minus 3, you can see that looks quite nice because we're going to get some terms that are going to cancel so what we're going to get is this if we want to uh, just write that nice let's see what we can cancel out that cancels that cancels and we get left with this and that is the final answer and that's the four marks out of four lots of method marks to be gained if you do certain bits correct remember this is essentially just multiplying being able to multiply fractions and subtracting fractions but with algebra and this is how you get your grade 9 people it is achievable but I know it's a lot to remember and work on considering you have many other exams to focus on but well done hope this really helps you out and builds up your confidence